Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. A long time ago, director Paul Verhoeven directed Robocop. It was awesome. He also directed Total Recall. It was awesome. He also directed Basic Instinct, of which I've only seen the scene, but I hear the rest is awesome. And he also directed Starship Troopers. It underperformed at the box office, got mixed reviews at best, left an awkward and confused feeling for many of the viewers who saw it. And it was awesome! getting a bit of a cult following in recent days, at least enough to warrant shit-shaped cookie-cutter video sequels, many audiences still aren't sure what to think of this film. Is it secretly saying something provocative, just another hot people versus monster movie, or both? People can't decide if there's an aggressive message to this movie or not, which ironically could be part of the film's intent. What do I mean by that? Well, let's take a closer look at this film to find out. Let's squash some bugs with some possible commentary on fascism. Half of you right now are going no duh, the other half of you are going no duh. Let's take a look at Starship Troopers. It starts off with a recruitment video for the mobile infantry, the future's version of the army. I'm doing my part too. <laughs> You'll notice, like in any commercial, everyone in the ad is beautiful. And when we enter real life, everyone is also beautiful. Rookie movie mistake or a clever hint that this is all satire of possible future propaganda. <laughs> 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 Laugh all you want, benign youth, but I'm convinced there is more to this shitbuster than meets the eye. It's not that. You don't have pants on. <laughs> ah! This is like a bad dream! <laughs> gives us background on the enemy Earth is fighting, the bugs, as you'll notice it's almost comical how little information they give about them. Plendathu, source of the bug meteor attacks to ensure the safety of our solar system. Plendathu must be eliminated. We never really get any more information than that. We don't even know why the bugs are throwing meteors at us, as the focus is more on just making the villains look evil and the heroes look strong together. <laughs> Maybe not entirely together. A news report during an invasion on the bugs is interrupted, which is a shame when you have such great journalistic lines like this. It's an ugly planet! A bug planet! Their interior design leaves much to be desired! Good to know that while the future's PSA censor out the gore, this live footage apparently is fine to post in primetime news. Ah! Look kids, that might be daddy bleeding strawberry jam! Ah! Ah! For one, welcome our new insect overlords. Like to remind them that I can be helpful in rounding up others to toil in their underground sugar caves. Cut to one year earlier as those future cadets are in school learning about how that one year earlier cliche is going to be a staple of bad film openings in about 20 years. Rico. Rico! Pay attention. Answer the question about why my arm is a baked potato. This is Rico, played by Casper Van Dien, who has the hots for Carmen, played by Denise Richards. He draws cartoons of them getting together because, as you can see, this is clearly the look and physique of your everyday average cartoonist. You may also notice that the teachings in this future are not quite as, um, peaceful as we're used to. This year we explored the failure of democracy. Something given has no value. And force, my friends, is violence. The supreme authority from which all other authority is derived. This is why President Alec Baldwin is the leader of our humble country. Rico and Carmen go to see how they did on their finals. I'm totally gonna be a rocket scientist in a Bond movie now. 35%, very nice. Wow, Count Olaf's latest disguise is his best yet. He posts Rico's score in big letters to humiliate him, again making you wonder what kind of world allows that option in their public computers, as they hurry to their bug dissection class led by Dr. Nefaro. We humans like to think we are nature's finest achievement. I'm afraid it just isn't true. We are to be bred und schlottert! Indeed, it's a tough future where lab coats and gloves are for wimps and the weakest students cough up potato soup in protest. You'll find people being covered in soup. It's a constant theme in this movie. Oh, and psychics are apparently a thing in this future too, as Count Olaf uses his telepathy to see if he can bring out psychic powers in Rico. Trust me when I say you're not gonna find much in Casper Van Dien's head. I see the ace of spades. Good guess, but wrong. Count Olaf, though, demonstrates his powers on his pet ferret. Go bug mom, Cyrano. And find my hosting of the Oscars amazing. I sure hope you don't do anything like that to me. Don't be afraid. Can't do human. Yet. And he's officially
occasionally scarier than the bugs. Again, I'm not sure if that's intended. We see that this future clearly doesn't have the film concussion, as not only are football uniforms even less safe than before, but they partake in stunts even goofy cartoons wouldn't be able to manage. It's the Tony the Tigers versus the Frozone Giants. They may be fascist, but at least they allow co-ed teams, which is a little confusing, but not as confusing as AT&T wanting to be associated with this bleak and violent future. I'm certain I'll have more questions than this film will have answers. After the game, Rico gets ready to go to the big dance. Who said you could grow up so fast? Huh? Well, he is 29. But his folks are upset at the idea of him joining federal service to go fight bugs after graduating. It's a teacher, isn't it? What's his name? Mr. Ratchek. Silly name. Yes, it is. Thank you for doing my job for me, movie. And let's be honest, is it any stranger than the actor's real name? I think this character would actually be more awesome if they called him Michael Ironside. I don't think anyone in the audience would mind. At the dance we discover that while Rico has the hots for Carmen, another girl named Dizzy Silly name. has the hots for Rico. After tonight, most of us probably won't see each other again. Can't we just be friends, Diz? I mean, it is our last night together. Surely I can start a relationship with you now. I want to talk to Mr. Ratchak. Hey, better hurry up if you want to catch him. You're the best. Ooh, Dizzy Andrew! And now Count Olaf's impression of Neil Patrick Harris pretending to be straight. <laughs> Again, scarier than the bugs. Rico finds out Carmen is joining Federal Services too, but honestly, I doubt you'll be paying attention to that after I point out this guy. What the hell is he doing? I mean, there's jazz hands, and then there's dance surrendering. I think this is dance surrendering. The next day, they sign up with easily the most chatty of office clerks. Fresh meat for the grinder, eh? So how'd you kids do? I'm gonna be a pilot. Good for you. We need all the pilots we can get. Next time we meet, I'll probably have to salute you. Infantry, sir. Good for you. Mobile infantry made me the man I am today. You know, the line would go a lot faster if you would just give them their papers. So where do you come from? I was born in Mississippi, back in the good old year of... All of you are gonna hear my life story! After saying goodbye to one another, we cut to more propaganda, which, as you can see, is difficult to tell the difference between that and this film's reality. A murderer was captured this morning and tried today. Execution tonight at 6, all net, all channels. Mary Hart will be hosting, and then executed. If you think you're psychic, maybe you are. Hey, wait, that's bullshit! Lassie doesn't believe in psychics! Those belief in demonic woodpeckers has gone up. Rico arrives to his new home to discover how aggressive it is. Hi, I'm your senior drill instructor, career sergeant, Sim. Suck it, nigga! I'm only here because Arlie Ermey is too busy filming the Frighteners! He does get a little company, though, as Diz is in the same group as him, as well as a show-off named Ace. Get in line like everyone else. <laughs> you got some guts for a rich kid. And you got quite a career, considering you're related to Gary Busey. Ace finds out, though, what happens when you don't follow orders. Who needs a knife in a nuke fight, anyway? Chain on that wall, trooper. I'll show you to be a crumpled John Heater caricature. The enemy cannot push a button if you disable his hand. So just ask the bug to put his hand against the wall and you'll be good. Medic! If you think that's far-fetched, check this out. Co-ed showers. John, what about you? Oh, I'm going into politics, and you know, you gotta be a citizen for that, so here I am. Ah. There's an irony that in a future, trying to show that men and women are equal, this was probably just done to get some booby shots. Granted, there are some side dicks, but they're pretty much on par with the Austin Powers naked scenes. So, um, fascist-ish progressive-ish? Meanwhile, Carmen seems to be doing well with where she's stationed. While she flies around the set of Space Mutiny, Rico's group plays Capture the Flag, launching him into the spotlight. You shot Church, you team-killing fucktard! But when they use live ammunition fighting the Toy Story army men, Rico tells a soldier to take off his malfunctioning helmet. <laughs> Pretty sure we can still save him! As punishment, the soldier who shot him is sent away, and Rico has to get a talking to by Hank from Breaking Bad. I think the soldier getting sent away got the better deal. Hank is tough! Why did you order your man to remove his helmet during a live fire exercise? Sir, I needed everyone in my squad operational, sir! We'll try administrative punishment. Administrative punishment, by the way, is getting your shirtless ass dragged in front of everybody and being goddamn whipped. Again, kind of feel like the 
soldier that actually shot the guy got off pretty easy compared to this. Lay down on this, son. It helps. I know. I've gone through this too. Just not in public. As intense as this is, you do have to wonder, where the hell did they acquire a guy to whip people? For the military, no less. So it says here you have experience as a professional whippist? Oh yeah, years of experience. And what made you want to pursue this profession? Oh, you know. No, I don't. Well, sometimes you just get tired of surprising friends and neighbors. Consenting friends and neighbors? Then it wouldn't be a surprise now, would it? No, you've got a point. And I just decided that I want to give back to the community by whipping people for a good cause. We see this more as a tragic necessity than a good cause. Sure, sure, but if you gotta do it, you might as well do it with a slightly aroused smile on your face. You are by far the scariest person I have ever met in my entire life. But thankfully, that's a qualification. You've got the job! <laughs> Now, with all due respect, please attempt to never see me again. Why does everyone I ever meet always tell me that? So while Carmen is out piloting the ship, an asteroid from the bug seems to be floating towards them. Captain, we're in the path of an unidentified object moving toward us at high speed. Profile suggests an asteroid, ma'am. <laughs> you need a computer to see that? I'd assume the qualifications to be in this army would at least be to spot the E on an eye chart. <laughs> that asteroid might be heading towards Earth, though, as Rico discovers talking to his parents. Johnny? Dad? Where's your uniform? Bill? I mean, as a guy who didn't want you to join in the first place, I'm still a stickler for presentation. Oh my, what's that? Looks like rain. This time of year? Sure is dark. What's that giant four shadowing over us? It turns out that was from the asteroid which smashed Rico's hometown. Over a million dead, especially Rico's parents. But what about Boomer? Boomer. Oh, no Boomer. Oh, okay. I barely even knew Boomer. One of my favorite laughs in the film probably comes from this. The war effort needs your effort. At work, at home, in your community. <laughs> As of now, cockroaches are officially being called freedom bugs. Even our heroes get a little time on the news. Here's a bunch of MI kids that look like they could eat bugs for lunch. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. Okay, granted, that's already a very awkward line, but that delivery did not make it any less awkward. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. I got love in my tum tum tum. Some say the bugs were provoked by the intrusion of humans into their natural habitat. That a live and let live policy is preferable to war with the bugs. But then I remember the same guy who directed this also directed Showgirls, and that does put a crimp in our plausible commentary. Rico comes across his old fling, though, as they seem to cross paths. I can't believe we're both working for Planet Spaceball. But Carmen's new boyfriend seems to have some harsh words. Johnny, wait. Yeah, forget it, Lieutenant. He's mobile infantry. Just doesn't pay to be polite. You got something to say about the mobile infantry? He literally just did. <laughs> How are my concerned stares not stopping this? No, Come on! Let's go. Mobile infantry and fleet don't mix. It's like Steven Seagal in acting, just some things don't go together. They enter into hero's duty as several of their ships are shot at. <gasps> oh no, they'll be perfectly fine in a later scene. Like a little nick on her head, that's it. How good are these goddamn medics? They see the bugs are literally shitting on them, so they try to attack. They show us the scene from the beginning as the media continues to react to what's going on. It gets smarter. Insects with intelligence? Have you ever met one? I can't believe I am hearing this nonsense. Who the hell invited the Mad Hatter to this conversation? Brain bugs? Frankly, I find the idea of a bug that thinks offensive. Not as offensive as Johnny Depp playing me, but still offensive. This Wait is the most ridiculous moment, conversation I have ever had. Still a better show than Hardball. As our team recovers, they're given a new unit with a new lieutenant. Tension on deck! Well, this better be Bruce Campbell. Oh, it's Michael Ironside. Close enough. Everyone fights, no one quits. If you don't do your job, I'll shoot you. 
you bring up the next Karate Kid, I'll also shoot you. After giving a bug bomb so big you could put an Orkin logo over it, they go inside and take care of any surviving insects. And for a gun that could have given any generic explosion, this one makes one hell of a boom. <laughs> Now one of the other big bugs, proving that their blood is either pea green soup or lobster bisque. I told you there'd be a soup theme. And they relax for the night as Ironside brings out some entertainment. Have fun! That's an order! Oh. <laughs> so violins are among the entertainment given to the troops? I am so fascinated by this world where people who study the arts are ripped commandos. Maybe Matt Groening is more built than we think? So Rico finally decides to give in to Dizzy's advances. <laughs> this would be a lot more romantic without the guy who just bought a windowless van face. Again, being abusey, it's amazing this is the first time I'm bringing this up. Hey, if you thought the Spider-Man kiss was romantic, get a load of... this? Okay, I am literally smelling my pits. This is not as romantic as you think it is. But Ironside tells him they're getting a distress call. Report in 10 minutes. Yes, sir. Who's that with you? Florence, sir. Make it 20 minutes. More people can die as long as you're getting nookie. One of the soldiers gets caught by a flying bug, though, and Ironside shoots him as opposed to the monster. I'd expect anyone in this unit to do the same for me. Okay. Rico. Sir. You're acting sergeant. Move him out. You heard the lieutenant! Uh, actually, we didn't. He talked very softly. Why are we following you? They come across one of their bases the bugs attacked, where they say the line any good movie of quality should have. They sucked his brains out. Any film that says that is on the right path. The bugs attack, though, as our team is stuck in their Alamo. This place crawls, sir. We need pickup now. What's your position? Come down on this transmission. So the outpost? That's crazy. Well, I hope you have a crazy pilot. Out! And it better be my girlfriend! It'd be dramatically convenient! Sure enough, that is who comes to rescue them, but sadly at the cost of their dear lieutenant. Rico, you know what to do! Yes, sir! Carry me to the ship. Wait, what are you doing? I only lost my legs. I've lost limbs before. Ah! I turned down five episodes of Jet Jackson for this. He's not the only one who gets exterminated, though. Dizzy smiled for a second, which of course means she has to die. <laughs> We're being Mars attacks to death! You're gonna be all right, Diz. I got to have you. Rain will make the flowers grow. It looks like they give her a funeral, which must have been tricky, seeing how you have to mourn the loss of a person named Dizzy without cracking a smile. Dizzy was my friend. She was a soldier. I could have done it. Van Dean, you're a better actor than I give you credit for. But more than that, she was a citizen of the Federation. Of all the souls I've ever encountered, she rocked the most in the sack. And if there's anyone who doesn't still think this is a satire of aggressive fascist propaganda, just look at how they dress Doogie Hauser in this scene. The bugs laid a trap for us, didn't they? Elegant proof of intelligence, isn't it? You knew and you sent them anyway? You don't approve. Well, too bad. We're in this for the species, boys and girls. It's simple numbers. I actually taken more seriously as Bart Simpson killing someone in a TV movie. This is kind of adorable. And every day I have to make decisions that send hundreds of people like you to their deaths. Didn't they tell you, Colonel? That's what the mobile infantry's good for. Oh yeah, they told us that. That's why we sent you. <laughs> so they go into attack again and somehow they don't figure to spread out their ships rather than keep them clustered together. Kind of making you easier to hit, isn't it? <laughs> Oh no, I think they actually mean to kill us off this time! It's okay, you'll just get a scar right here, it's fine. How's this for an embarrassing end? Death by door. <laughs> it's okay, doors have outwitted the smartest of sci-fi characters. Carmen and her boyfriend make it to the planet where they're captured by the bugs and taken to their... Um, butt judge from the wall? <laughs> Rico wants to save them, but knows the odds of them surviving are slim. Rescue party! Cancel that! You know as well as I do, she's already dead. Aside from a love scene in Wild Things, her career is basically over! 
So they go to take out the bugs and- but Carmen's down there. Word has it, she's dead. She's still alive. But well, I thought you said she was dead. How many times can she die in this? Well, apparently at least one more time, as despite being stabbed through the chest, she picks up a gun and starts firing it like nothing's happened to her. What kind of milk is she drinking? Cause she's goddamn indestructible! They pull out the anus queen as Gestapo Patrick Harris reads its mind. It's afraid. It's afraid! Hey, I'd be afraid too if I knew I was gonna see you in two Smurfs movies. So Heil Patrick Harris sums up who's really to thank for today's victory. This is when it turned. And it wasn't the mighty fleet, it wasn't some fancy new weapon. It was a drill instructor named Zim who captured a brain. Zim. Who the hell is Zim? Oh, the drill instructor. I guess he was busy defeating the main bug while we were focusing on our heroes. Kind of odd. Uh, go Zim, we apparently couldn't have done it without you. Who the hell were you again? The film ends as it begun with a recruitment video urging people to join their battle and fight the bugs. Soldiers like Private Ace Levy and Lieutenant John Rico. Come on, you if you wanna live forever! Well, she practically is. Seems doable. Oh, yes. Uh, by the way, the spacecraft's still in extreme danger. May not make it back attempting risky reentry. blah, 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 blah. And that was Starship Troopers. Is it really just another dumb action flick? Uh, don't get me wrong, it's cliched, overblown, and has a lot of generic characters, but I think that's the point. The whole film is shot like propaganda, making you imagine yourself as the heroes, crave blood, and immerse yourself in the battle. When someone dies, it's because of those damn bugs, and any criticism to understand why this war is even happening is pushed off to the side for loud war cries. If you look at this as a film that would be shown in their universe, which again, isn't difficult given the PSAs they show, it can display an interesting mirror showing what we can look like when we get more focused on destroying our enemies rather than finding other ways to peacefully solve the problem. And that's just one way to look at it. There's many other ways you can read into this if you choose to go looking for it. Maybe you don't want to. Maybe you just want to see a shoot 'em up bug movie and as those go, this isn't that bad at that either. But I truly believe there's more to this silly looking film than meets the eye. <laughs> Oh, I see. You still don't believe me. No, you don't have pants on again. <laughs> no, just kidding. This time we don't believe you. You know what? Fine. Because in the future, people will see this for the masterpiece that it is. It is the future. This film is over 20 years old. Well, people are starting to realize it's brilliant. I never hear anyone talking about it. Well, they will. They won't. If I raise enough awareness... You never will. I have the determination. You're unbelievably lazy. Fine! Just laugh all you want! <laughs> we will. <laughs> but it's because you're naked now. <laughs> Is your penis actually a sensor bar? It's a very specific bird defect! Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out, and this week we are doing Child Fun International. Founded in 1938, Child Fun International is a global child development and protection agency to help children and families around the world. They help children break the generational cycle of poverty and achieve their full potential no matter what their situation is. This organization works in 27 countries, assisting approximately 19 million children and family members, and are a member of the Child Fund Alliance, a global network of 12 children development organizations. If you look at their site and their YouTube channel, you can see all the various ways, various people, and various rewards of helping those who wish to give a strong, promising future. These people work so hard through so many challenges to give hope to people that have almost lost all of it. But with good people like this and your donation, hope can always find a way. Click on the link and see what you can do to help those who give so much for the future.